Hi, I'm Matt Brunig here with Cool Tools today to show you how to set up a rectangular druzy quartz in a handmade bezel cup. You can use some of these techniques to also set other fancy stone shaped stones that you might have in your studio. Okay, today we're going to be using a Smith Little Torch, a chasing hammer, a chasing tool, a flat steel block, round nose pliers, half round pliers, flat pliers, standard needle nose pliers, a solder pick, a small bezel tool, shears, a bezel pusher, a burnisher, a pair of snips, a ring clamp, two different saw blade thicknesses, 8-aught and 4-aught, a saw frame, various sanding sticks, a barrette file, a half round file, a flat file, both number two cut, two different grits of sanding discs, a sanding drum with sandpaper on it, and two different grits of pumice stones, and another bezel pusher. For soldering, we're going to use a ceramic soldering pad, two cross-lock tweezers with a, with a tweezer holder, a mask to protect ourselves from fumes while soldering. We're going to use copper tweezers in the pickle here. We're using a combination of boric acid and denatured alcohol, flux, and two solder picks. It's important to remember safety while you're soldering. There's fumes produced not only by the boric acid and alcohol, but also by the solders. So it's important to wear an N95 mask or a respirator, or you can use a fume extractor if you like. Hi, today we're going to make a Druzy Quartz pendant. We're going to use a stone. This is your Druzy Quartz. Here's some 24 gauge sterling sheet. This is some 16 gauge sterling wire. This is some 18 gauge sterling wire and some 28 gauge bezel wire. And of course our three solder, solders, hard, medium, and easy. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make um, a bezel frame for our druzy quartz, which is rectangular. Um, stones with corners can be kind of tricky, and, and a druzy especially, because the stone itself is kind of lumpy. And so what I'm doing is just getting the basic shape of the bezel around, around the stone. You may notice that this wire seems to be, be uh, moving pretty easily. Um, it is pretty thin gauge, it's 28 gauge. So that is nice and thin and easy, easy to move. Now what I'm going to do is make a cut through the bezel. You can see that the bezel is overlapping and the under part of the bezel is going to protect the stone from being cut with the saw. Keeping the, keeping the blade nice and vertical and away from the stone. In fact, I'm cutting into the edge of my bench pin as well to just try and keep it as vertical as possible. I'm cleaning up the seam right now, trying to keep it as flat as possible using a medium grit sanding disc. What can be tricky about with adjusting this bezel wire is because it is so thin and it is so flat, you wanna have as good and clean as a seam as possible. So you'll often look at one side and go, oh, that's lined up perfectly, and look at the opposite side and go, oh, it's a little bent out of shape. So just be patient with it. Try and adjust along the way and that it's, that it's evenly matched on either side. Using our crosslock tweezers, I'm gonna dip it in a mixture of boric acid and alcohol, which is mis mixed about 20 to one. 20 denatured alcohol one boric acid. And what I'm doing here is I dipped it again because I want the, uh, the boric acid and alcohol 
to pool down at the seam. Wherever it's cleaner, you're gonna have a better seam. The boric acid and alcohol helps protect the silver from fire scale. And what fire scale is when is the, uh, the metal can be discolored from heat. So I'm, I'm cutting off a piece of sterling silver hard solder, which is the highest melting temperature solder. You wanna use, use this one in the seam of a bezel so that it's a nice strong joint. I'm using a number seven flame or number seven torch tip. I'm starting off with a pretty fluffy flame. You want the flux, that was flux I was just using. You want the flux to be nice and white and bubbly when you're using it. I'm adding in a little bit of additional boric acid and alcohol. Now we're going to quench it in pickle. Pickle is a mild acid that removes any fire scale or additional flux that's been cooked onto the surface of the metal. All right, so we have a basic rectangular frame built here. Um, and if you look closely at our stone, the stone is in a true rectangle. It has a bit of a curve to, every, to each outside edge. So I'm going to use the stone as a guide and a gauge to fit it into this rectangular piece. Now it's a little bit tight on the sides, but I'm gonna angle it in. You see that I'm angling it into the bezel this direction. You don't wanna try and push it all in at once. And then as I'm pushing down, the bottom of the stone is bowing out both sides of the rectangular frame. Now that I have the stone in place, I'm gonna push it all the way to the bottom of the bezel, like so. And then I'm gonna use a bezel roller to help shape it to the corners and the sides. And I'm looking at the back of the stone just to try and decrease any gap, follow that contour. and keep those side pieces bowed. I'm not pressing really hard. Again, the advantage of using this 28 gauge wire is very malleable. And once you press it into place next to your stone, using the stone as a guide, it has a good metal memory as far as staying in place. So we have a piece of 24 gauge sterling silver sheet that we're gonna use as the back of the pendant. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solder that into place on there. So, so I'm not using a great big piece like this. I'm gonna trim some off. And I like to use a little bit larger piece so that we have plenty of surface area to get a nice solder seam all the way around the bezel. I'm using a pair of shears to cut straight through that. I'm using a bench block to flatten the piece out. Because it has a tendency to want to curl while you're cutting it. Now to check, to make sure that you got a good seam to start with on the bottom, you just kind of look at it from all four sides and make sure that your, your bezel frame is sitting flat on the surface area that you intend on soldering it to. Put your mask on while soldering. Dipping it in the boric acid and alcohol and go ahead and ignite it. You can see that there's a nice good film of boric acid on there. That's that white chalky substance. We 
We're going to go ahead and take our frame, dip it in boric acid. Let it sit right there. I'm going to add a little bit of flux. Because there's, it's already wet underneath there with the boric acid and alcohol, that's going to allow that flux to just follow that liquid right underneath your bezel. We're going to cut off several pieces of easy solder. This is the lowest melting temperature solder that we're using today. And it's going to be really good to solder that frame right into place on there. You can see we have a nice perimeter of boric acid and alcohol and flux all the way around there. That's that white bubbly substance is, is the flux. I'm going to add a little bit more to our soldering pick. And this will help get the solder to adhere to the end of the pick. What's special about these hot picks is there's a divot right at the end of each of these and the solder wants to land right in there. So I'm going to go ahead and place a few all the way around. You'll see that I'm adjusting the fl flame a little bit and kind of waving it underneath the piece. And that's to get it to adhere to the flux that's already in place there around the perimeter. I'm going to turn my cross locks a little bit to get the last one. We got one on either side, on all four sides. Now we have them all in place. The back is already kind of preheated. So we're going to go in there using a larger flame first. You'll notice that I'm kind of adjusting the flame with my thumb. And what I'm adjusting is the oxygen level that's going to the, to the fire. You can see it starting to flow. And it's gone all the way around the perimeter of that piece. We're going to go ahead and quench that in pickle and get all that fire scale off of there. Let it soak for a couple minutes to get all the fire scale off of there. And then we're going to pierce out the outside edge and add a jump ring. We're going to use a 4 aught saw blade to cut around the perimeter of our bezel frame. The way I like to do it, I like to put the, the front end of the saw blade in the, in the top of the saw frame with the, with the blades, the points pointing downward towards me. And then push my chest up against it lock the rear end of the saw frame. So what I'm going to do, um, cutting vertically, I'm just going to, I'm going to cut all the way around the outside edge of this frame. So I've left, I tried to saw out away from the frame because I don't want to accidentally cut into the bottom of the frame of the bezel. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my flat file, which is a number two file. It's a pretty coarse file and take off that excess. I'm, I'm leaning my uh, file kind of away from the bezel. And when I'm not scuffing the bottom of that. So I'm doing about 90% of the removal of the back plate with the file. And then I'm going to come back in with a medium sanding disc to do the remaining cleanup. You can, if you prefer to use a sanding stick or some other method to do that, you certainly can. I like the rotary tool because they, they work pretty quickly. 
They do produce some dust, so I'm going to put my mask on. I've turned it over to reduce the edge that's on the back plate. And then I'll also to kind of get it a gauge and see where I need to do more removal on the side. I'm using a number one half round file and I'm working right on the seam of the bezel frame that was soldered with hard solder. At this point, I just want to see if I'm going to uncover any pits and if there needs to be any more additional soldering done. See if there's any lines along the bottom here. But it looks like we got a, a good seam all the way around. Again, I'm leaning the file out, angling it this way towards the back plate away from the bezel frame. So I've changed my sanding disc to a, a fine sanding disc and I'm just I'm getting the final edges sanded up here and prepped. That everything is nice and smooth. I've also worked over the uh, the solder line, the seam where I used the hard solder on the bezel frame. I'm going to follow that sanding disc texture with a uh, sandpaper stick. This is a 1200 grit sandpaper. And what I like to do is I like to work on one side at a time. I'm starting with the, the side that has the hard solder seam on the frame to make sure that there's no unsightly pits on that area. And because the bezel has a slight curve to it because the stone has a slight curve to it. What I'm doing is I'm taking the sanding stick and I'm kind of going up in a half round motion over each side. And I'm going to follow up. This is a 3M polishing cloth and it's on a it's on a stick just like the 1200 grit sandpaper and it brings it to nearly a high polish. Also inspecting as I go around to make sure that the seam is continuing to be good, that we're not uncovering any blemishes or pits. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to clean up the back of it a little bit too. Taking the sandpaper flat, just going like that. And again with the 3M polishing cloth. When making a bezel cup, it's often easy to get ahead of yourself and want to see how well your stone is going to fit into place. And if you're like me, sometimes you've stuck a stone down into the bezel cup and then got it stuck. So here's a little trick to alleviate the problem of getting the stone stuck in, in your bezel cup. I have a piece of normal dental floss sitting there straight across the bezel and I'm going to put my stone in angling it down from one side and then pushing in from the other see that we have a good fit now it may be yeah it's pretty well it's pretty tight I've had bezels turn out to be even a tighter fit but where this floss really comes in to play is to remove the stone easily without having to tap on the back of the bezel cup. And now we're going to install a jump ring. For the jump ring on top, here's my finished piece. There's a little ring going this way centered in the in the top of, of the bezel pendant. This is 18 gauge wire right here. So I'm going to show you how to make a jump ring for that. Use a pair of round nose pliers. What I like to do 
Let's take the wire, go around in a circle. All the way till you're overlapping. This is your start point with this straight piece here. Now you're going to cut off that little bit of excess, which is okay because then you'll have a nice true round jump ring to install on your pendant. Again, here using the saw frame, keeping it very vertical. <coughs> Through the, through the ring. And you want to take two pairs of pliers. These are the standard needle nose pliers. Take the ring and pushing the two ends of the ring a little past one another. And then I'm taking both pairs of pliers, pulling it out so that there's lots Lots of tension on the seam. Now what I'm going to do, since we're going to be installing this on a rather flat top bezel cup, is I'm going to flatten the bottom end. And I'm going to do that right where the seam is in the jump ring. I'm going to use a pair of flat pliers, grasping, grasping it directly opposite. of the seam. The seam is right here. I'm taking my number two flat file and going straight up and down, just making a nice flat surface since it's going to a flat top pendant. For this application, I'm going to use a slightly harder solder this is medium solder. Has a slightly higher melting temperature than the Easy. But it's gonna create a nice bond between the jump ring and the flat back of the bezel. Submerging it in the bore cap and alcohol. Take the jump ring, ball up the solder right there, and the flat side that I just filed flat, I got the solder to jump right into place on there. I'm going to preheat the bezel, which already has got boric acid and alcohol on it. And put a little bit of a flux dot at the backing of it. So I'm heating up the back of the bezel primarily. I have the open end of the cup facing that way because the thicker gauge wire that makes the back of the bezel, the 24 gauge, can retain and take more heat. And there we go. I don't know if you saw but the solder basically jumped from the jump ring down to the flat portion, the backing of the bezel cup. And now I'm gonna quench it. So I'm gonna use um, the fine sanding disc here, and I'm going to create kind of a knife edge on the top of all four of the, the frame walls. I'm sanding a little bit less at the corners because I'm going to be doing some more work with a saw, saw blade there to relief the corners to set the stone. 
not exactly sure the angle that I'm using right here, but it's if you look at it closely under magnification, it kind of looks like the edge of a normal pocket knife. So for the setting of the stone, I've already sharpened my top four edges. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to relief the corners of this because, because it is rectangular. It has not a sharp edge, but, but a corner that we have to work with. So what I'm doing is I'm using an 8 aught saw blade. Earlier I was using a 4 aught saw blade to cut around the perimeter of the bezel. This, is, this saw blade is about half the thickness. And I'm cutting kind of using an upward motion because it's not really drastically cutting. It's scoring a place where I'm going to fold that bezel in on the stone. Now that I've got that line established in the corner of, of the bezel, I'm going to sharpen it up. I'm going to reverse the fine sanding disc and work at an angle similar to what I was doing on the four edges, just kind of tightening up that corner to the line that I've already cut in the corner of the bezel cup. Now using my floss again, make sure that I have the corners cut far enough down to where it'll be easy to fold those in for setting the stone. I'm using my jeweler's loop just to see what the depth of each cut is in the four corners. I have it where I want it, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the floss. Now this is a, a bezel pusher that is, uh, is basically a square piece of steel stock. And I'm gonna start in the corners. Folding one corner down just to try and get established where it is going to be centered. What's neat about these stones is they're all kind of lumpy. They're all they're all individual, you know, kind of like snowflakes, not one is the same as another. And so you got to kind of follow the contour of the stone and actually kind of let the stone decide how it's going to be set. I'm going to use the bezel roller, kind of start on the flat sides, working that down. Repeating the same thing on the opposite side, slowly moving that down just bit by bit and kind of paying attention to what the corners are doing. I'm probably going to come back in here with my saw frame and relief those corners just slightly more. Just removing a very small amount of metal so that the top flap can be pushed down over the, the flap that's already been pushed into position. We're just creating some, some real estate for that for that top edge to find a spot to sit. You're gonna notice that each corner is different and you kinda of have to adjust as you're setting to what the stone is telling you to do. Because I noticed that this side over here is a little bit lower, the, the, the depth of the stone is a little bit lower than the opposite corner over here. And of course there's little bitty crystal lumps all, all along the way. And so you don't wanna over push and possibly fracture any of those because you might lose that nice blue color. So I think that's set. Now what I'm going to do 
I'm going to clean up the flaps where I have one flap of metal overlapping the other. And what I'm going to do to clean that up is I'm going to use a, a needle file. And this is a barrette file. It's kind of worn out. It's, it's been used and loved for many years. Uh, the, the thing you want to do with a barrette file is when you first get it, if you have a brand new one, there's, there's some edges on, on the very flat edge here. The back of it doesn't have any file teeth on it at all. Um, the front of it does, but there can be some burrs along this edge. So what you want to do is take a, a sanding stick and prep that tool by doing this. And you're just taking off the, the slight edges or any burrs that might remain from, from the manufacturer. And then you can even, if you really want it to be shiny, you can follow up with a 3M stick. That's a nice polished edge. So then what that does is it kind of creates a safety edge if you're working next to a stone or, or working around a prong or something like that, you don't want to scuff the stone with the edge of that file. Um, I'm not going to be using the edge of the file much with this druzy. What I'm going to be doing is using the file to remove any excess stuff that's sharp here at the corners. One of the benefits of having an older tool like this, it is slightly worn. So as I'm filing, it is kind of burnishing, burnishing the metal as well. And you want to be work, working the high flap down towards the lower neighbor that's underneath. And work all the way around, not working too much in one particular place because you don't want to expose the cut that you made with your 8 aught saw blade earlier. So feel free to stop at any time, kind of feel, make sure that you're smoothing that corner out to how you like it. So I've got the four corners cleaned up pretty well with my file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with a pumice wheel, take off any tool marks that we see, using it very carefully, very slowly, as, as to not scuff our stone with the pumice wheel. And also as you're doing this, you can see if there's any imperfections in any of your corners. I'm primarily working on the four flat sides. So what I'm using now is a, uh, a pink wheel, which is, is a pumice wheel, but, it, but it's, uh, it's more like a high polish. And I'm primarily using this right on the flat sides, giving us a pre-polished surface to where we come in and burnish. Now we're going to use the burnishing tool, primarily in the corners of our pendant. And what we're doing is we're just trying to conceal any line that might remain from where we made the cut to relief the corner. Basically, pressing that metal and then polishing it simultaneously where it's a nice soft corner. This is another small burnishing tool that I made out of a normal fork. The end of this is kind of conical and it's highly polished. The reason I made this piece out of a fork is because the steel that's in a fork that you would get at a cafeteria or, you know, the cheaper the fork, the better, because the metal is softer. You know, those spoons and forks are easy to bend. And so what that is, is a little bit more forgiving right alongside these stones. If you accidentally bump into one of the little crystals on the druzy, it's not likely to chip it off unless you hit it really hard. And I'm, I'm just kind of following the edge of the knife edge that was pushed down to hold the stone in place, making it a little bit softer and not sharp. All right, so the final bit of this project is I'm gonna make a jump ring bale uh, that, the, that the chain will go through. And what I'm using is 16 gauge wire to do that and a pair of round nose pliers 
to turn around into a circle. So you kind of want to gauge how big your ring is going to be depending on the type of chain that you intend on putting through there. I would say that that's a pretty average size right there. And here again, like I made the other jump ring, I leave a little tail out there. I'm going to be making a cut right over here so that our jump ring is a true circle. I'll show you a little trick to get the ring off of the saw blade. So it's kind of stuck on there rather than fiddle with trying to get it over the blade, I'm gonna release the bottom of the saw blade and off it comes. Now, this is a thicker gauge piece of wire. So what you could do, you can open that up and put it on your pendant like so. Close it back tight. And at this point, you could, you could call it a day if you want to have an open ring. The, the gauge of the metal, with it being 16 gauge, is heavy enough. It's not too likely unless um, a baby pulls on the pendant really hard that the, the jump ring is going to open. But for security measures, what I like to do is I like to solder that. And I'm going to show you the trick to do that without scorching the stone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the, the ring back up. Like so, remove it from the pendant. Close the ring back up. Making sure that you have a nice tight seam. And what we're going to do is we're going to pre solder this. Put our mask on. And I have some easy solder cut already right here. Easy solder is the lowest melting temperature solder. And it's going to be really good for this application. Borkid acid and alcohol go in there. And you might be asking yourself right now, Matt, why did you solder that? Because it's not on your pendant yet, and I'm going to show you. First, I'm going to quench it in the pickle. So, what I've done is I pre-charged the ring with solder. And I can see where my previous cut was. I'm going to cut back through there. Tighten up my saw blade again. So all this is going to make it a lot easier to solder this jump ring in place. So our ring is already pre-charged with some solder. I'm going to slide it through there, line it back up. So this is going to make your life a lot easier as far as soldering this ring into place because there's already solder adhered to the piece. Now to protect the stone, this is a normal soda pop can which I've cut off and it's filled with normal water. That's going to create a barrier to protect the stone from heat. Pour a little extra water in there. Now our druzy is completely submerged down in there. And because druzy is quartz, 
it's a little bit of a softer stone. It's a little bit more heat sensitive. So that's what we're doing is we're taking all the precautions that we can to protect our stone. We could probably get away with soldering it without having it down in, in the cool cup. That's what I call the little can here. But just for safety's sakes, we're gonna do it this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pick, dunk it in the boric acid and alcohol, and then ignite it just as it's hitting that ring. And there it went. Because that ring was charged with solder, it was ready, it was ready to flow. A lot of times, if you're going in there with just your seam and you're trying to get the solder to flow in the right place and the water is acting like a countersink, it's difficult to get that water or that solder to flow where you want it to. But because it already had solder, it already knew what it, where it wanted to go and it made our life a lot easier. All right, hopefully this video was helpful for you in approaching some of the fancy shaped stones out there that have corners in them. You can use some of these applications for pear shapes, triangular shapes, and other shaped cabs that you might have sitting around your studio. Thanks for watching. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.